Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Victoria Pilato. I'm the digital projects librarian and the liaison to the art department for Stony Brook University Libraries. I'm excited to welcome you all to the Art and Focus lecture series. This lecture is co-sponsored by Stony Brook Southampton Library and the Pollock Krasner House and Study Center. We would like to extend our thanks to Stony Brook's John H. Marburger III Fund for supporting the series. The Art and Focus series used to take place in person at the Southampton campus, but it's great to see more attendees in this virtual format. So thank you all for being here. I'm just going to share a few logistics before we get started. We're going to have time for Q&A after the lecture, so everyone will remain muted until then. However, you can leave questions via chat at any time. Now I would like to welcome Helen Harrison, Eugene V. and Claire E. Thaw, Director of the Pollock Krasner House and Study Center, as well as the coordinator of the series, to introduce our speaker. Oh, thank you so much, Victoria. It's really a pleasure to have this series uh, extend our normal summer lecture series now that we have Art in Focus in the spring and the fall. And this one in particular is associated with our current exhibition, Harold Lehman, the 1930s, which will be on through the end of October, which is after which we close for the season. Uh, I'm happy to welcome Lisa Lehman Traeger, uh, the artist's daughter, who's with us on this Zoom call, and also to introduce our speaker, David Lembeck, who is a graphic designer and independent scholar who's been researching Pennsylvania's post office murals for over 25 years. In 2007, he co-curated co the exhibition, A Common Canvas, Pennsylvania's Post Office Murals of the New Deal at the State Museum of Pennsylvania, and he's currently at work on a book about the murals. So I will turn this over now to David to give us information about Harold Lehman's Renovo Post Office Mural. Great. Well, thank you, Helen. Uh, I will share my screen, share my presentation. Let's There we go. I assume everybody can see that. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank a few people. Um, Helen Harrison at the uh, Krasner, at the Pollock Krasner House um, and uh, Victoria Pilato at the Stony Brook Library for inviting me to talk about Harold Lehman's mural. Also, Michael McMansky, who is a superb architectural photographer whose color photographs you'll be seeing. Uh, we've worked together to document examples of post office art in Pennsylvania. And also thanks to Lisa Lehman Traeger, Harold's daughter, who provided much of the archival material that I'll be showing today and who also joins us uh, on this Zoom talk. Now we're not seeing your full screen. Um, you'll have to start your slideshow. To oh, you're right. Oh. That's right, uh, play. There we go. Okay, so that looks good, right, Helen? Okay, excellent, thank you. Okay, um, I became interested in post office murals because I was interested in post office buildings. I like to explore the main streets of small towns and I thought the modest brick post offices were charming. Many were from the 1930s and 40s. This is a postcard of the post office in Renova, which is a small town in North Central Pennsylvania. When I went into the Renova post office, I was surprised to find this artwork on the lobby wall above the postmaster's door. It's a mural about four feet tall by 14 feet wide. It's called Locomotive Repair Operation, painted by Harold Lehman in 1943. Here's a closer look. The mural is a depiction of Renova's main industry, which was the repair of locomotives and train cars for the Pennsylvania Railroad. I was impressed by the draftsmanship of the mural and the way the artist captured the texture of the workers' clothes, the rust on the steel, and the bricks in the building in the background. These details show what work is being done. The men in the center are removing the tires from the locomotive's wheels. They're called tires, but they aren't rubber, they're steel. The man in the center is holding a piece of equipment that surrounds the tire and heats the tire so that it will expand and can be removed from the wheel. Then the rim and flange of the tire can be machined so that the wheel will roll smoothly on the railroad tracks. 
These are the two men on, on the left in the mural. The man on the far left was the foreman at the repair shop. His name was R.C. Russell and was well known in town. He's holding a World War II era poster that's meant to inspire productivity. The worker beside him is controlling an acetylene tank. It's a popular motif in government sponsored art from the New Deal to show management and labor working together. This, icon this iconography shows up in other forms of visual art for, um, such as posters and postage stamps, such as this one here. Uh, in this stamp, four people from different occupations walk side by side in common purpose. There's a woman with three men, as you can see, but there isn't any racial or ethnic diversity. Harold Lehman's mural was very well received by the residents of Renova and the government administrators who commissioned it. This is a letter from Edward Rowan, who was the technical director of the section of fine arts, which was the program within the treasury department that commissioned art for federal buildings. He wrote, I am pleased to tell you that I feel you have done a perfectly grand job and I am enthusiastic about it. And then in that handwritten note at the bottom of the letter, he wrote, the mature design variety of types, capable drawing and general conviction of the scene and action throughout, make this a mural, make this mural an achievement of which you may justly be proud. The Renova post office was one of many in Pennsylvania that received a mural. Each red dot on this map represents a post office with a mural. Okay. Oh, um, and this is a little bit about the, the, the program. As part of the New Deal, uh, as, as part of the New Deal effort to stimulate the economy, the federal government embarked on a massive program of public works construction. Across the country, thousands of post offices, courthouses, bridges, and dams were built. The most visible and widely distributed of these facilities were the post offices. The Treasury Department, which appropriated the funds for all federal construction, also designed most of these projects through its Office of Supervising Architect. At the beginning of the New Deal, the Treasury Department established a section of fine arts, known simply as the section, and 1% of appropriated funds were reserved for embellishment in the form of murals or sculpture. The section invited artists to enter national competitions for large post offices around the country. Runners up were offered commissions for smaller post offices. The artworks were expected to reflect the town's heritage in some way. Artists were expected to travel to their assigned post offices, meet with the postmaster and other residents, often a local historian or librarian, and generate several ideas for subject matter. After a sketch was approved by the section's administrators, the artist could proceed to create his or her artwork. Pennsylvania received 94 commissions for murals and sculpture for federal buildings. Uh, that was 88 post offices, five courthouses, and one customs house. The artworks were distributed across the state, both in ur ur urban and rural communities. Unlike the arts programs of the Works Progress Administration, or WPA, the section was not a relief program and its commissions were merit-based. The section administrators were enthusiastic supporters of American art and hoped to promote a uniquely American art via the mural program. Artists were, requ were requested to work in the what they called the American scene style. The section only vaguely defined this term, suggesting a straightforward uh, realism portraying subjects easily recognizable by every American. Allegorical or symbolic paintings, abstraction and European style modernism were forbidden. The Midwestern regionalists like Grant Wood, Thomas Hart Benton, and John Stuart Curry were championed as exemplars of the American scene. Uh, so there are a couple of key points. Uh, the Section of Fine Arts was a program that began during FDR's presidency. It was a program within the Treasury Department that operated between 1934 and 1943. It was funded with 1% of the construction budget for federal buildings. Nationwide, 12,000 murals and 300 sculptures were commissioned. Pennsylvania has the second largest collection of post office art. Uh, New York State has the most. Now, a, a 
post office mural was the result of a three-way negotiation between the section of fine arts administrators, the community where the artwork was placed and the artist. Uh, sometimes these players were in conflict with each other. Um, the section of fine arts had the most power in this process and was also the, the final word in any disputes. Because the section wanted these artworks to relate to people's daily lives, they suggested these three main themes, agriculture, local history, and industry. And obviously the Renova mural is an, exam is an example of, a, of an industrial themed mural. Uh, so let's return to the Renova mural and examine its genesis. In the spring of 1941, Harold Lehman was commissioned to create a mural for Renova. The fee was $850, which I believe was worth about $17,000 in today's money. But um, out of that fee, the artist was expected to pay for all of uh, the materials used, as well as transportation and lodging for visits to the town. Usually there was an initial vis visit to gather ideas for the mural subject. Artists usually painted these murals at another studio and then had to return to the town to install the finished artwork. Okay. Um, and this is, a, this is a letter from Renova's uh, postmaster named Luke Binder. He, uh, in May of 1941, he sent a letter to Harold Lehman and he wrote, there's not much to say about Renova. We have somewhere around 5,000 population and we are first and last a Pennsylvania railroad town. Our railroad shops and roundhouse employ between 900 and 1,000 men. It, of course, is the main industry and has been since 1866 or, or 1870. The West Branch of the Susquehanna flows through here, and we are surrounded by thousands of acres of state-owned forest land. Many small streams flow into the West Branch, and they all have fish, mostly trout and bass, in them. There are hundreds of hunting camps and cottages within a radius of 25 miles. During bear and deer season, we're a small city. Perhaps when you see our location and we have a talk, some idea may suggest itself to you. Drop in any time it's convenient. And Lehman was originally going to paint a mural of vignettes of the landscapes around Renova, but in the summer of 1941, he fell off a ladder and broke both of his arms. It took several months for him to recover, and during this time, Pearl Harbor was attacked and the US entered World War II. Lehman realized that Renova would play an important role in the war effort, and he wanted to depict its main industry. This is, uh, the, this is the first sketch that Lehman submitted to the section. Um, and uh, you can see some of the, it has some of the elements of the finished mural, but the composition is different, as is the style. Um, and uh, he received this letter back from Edward Rowan. This design has been reviewed by the members of the section, and frankly, we do not feel that you have introduced sufficient interest in the treatment of your subject matter for the work to be approved at this stage. It is our sincere conviction that the drawing is so stylized and mannered that it would not that it would have appeal only to students of a certain school of painting, and the actual functions of the figures have not been sufficiently explained. Perhaps the most serious criticism to be offered the work is the brick wall, which has been treated more like a stage set than like an actual building. The letter goes on to criticize this, the wall in particular, and then he, he wrote, uh, most of all, however, we feel that very little has been said in this design, and we would like further pencil sketches representing your additional proposals. And concludes, when working on the new designs, kindly keep in mind the public, kindly keep the public in mind for whom this work is intended. Uh, so this letter gives you a good idea about what the section was looking for in these artworks. And uh, um, so Harold Lehman got to work on, on some more sketches. Uh, and uh, oh, I just wanted to show this comparison of uh, one of the figures in his original sketch with the figure of the, of the driller in his Rikers Island uh, prison mural. And I think there's kind of a similarity of it, of the exaggerated physique um, that uh, he used, but this was something that the section administrators did not appreciate. They, I guess they wanted more of a sort of like a photo, photo realism. Okay, so 
Lehman made some more sketches and got approval from Edward Rowan to proceed to the next step uh, in the process, which was to create a color study. And this is the color study. These two pieces uh, show the left portion uh, of the mural. This was approved and then Lehman was allowed to paint the mural. As I mentioned, uh, artists usually work off site and this is Harold Lehman uh, um, uh, relaxing on a, on a bed. Harold Lehman painted the mural in a cabin in Woodstock, New York. On the wall behind him on the right, you can see the mural in progress. On the other wall to the right of the stove, you can see his original sketch that was rejected. Here are some photos of Lehman at work on the mural. Lehman collected a good bit of reference material when he was working on the mural, and there are also a number of these photos documenting the progress of the painting. When the mural was completed, Lehman sent an 8x10 photograph to this section. The mural was approved, and Lehman received permission to install it. Um, here's the mural being installed. Harold Lehman isn't one of the three men in the photo, he, so he may have been the one who snapped the picture. It's uh, not a, uh, I think this is a Xerox of a photograph and you can just barely make out the mural behind the men. I wanted to point out a few uh, things in the mural. This is the foreman, again, uh, named R.C. Russell. His photo's on the left. You can see Lehman painted a good likeness of him and got the details like the safety glasses and the, ja and the jacket right. Uh, attention to details like this is something the section encouraged. And here's R.C. Russell hold, holding a po poster. And here, here's the poster. This was a very popular poster at the time. It was designed by Jean Carlou, who was a French artist living in the US at the time. Uh, and this was meant as a motivational poster for people working in factories and, and uh, industry. Now, here's another detail uh, showing, uh, you can see in the background. Uh, if you look at the top of the mountain, you see just a few straggly trees. In the 1940s, the mountain had been clear cut uh, for lumber. This is, this is what Renova looks like today. The trees have grown back and the, um, the building on the right, that's, the, that's what remains of the repair shop building. Um, so the mural captures uh, Renova at a very specific time. Um, and uh, even though the, the town and its environment has changed, the mural depicts a very specific uh, point in, in, in history. Now, during the mural's creation, Harold Lehman changed his mural to adhere to the section's stylistic guidelines, but he did manage to insert a detail that went unnoticed. Uh, there are two round buttons in the worker's cap. These are union buttons. The section did not like artists making explicit pro-labor statements, but Lehman wanted to show his support for the unions, so he included them and the but uh, he included them, and the buttons were too small in the final eight by ten photograph to be noticed. Here are the two buttons. There were two different unions um, that the workers belonged to. They would, um, I think, every two months they would get a new button and put it in their cap. Um, it was actually R. C. Russell who provided Layman with the actual buttons and included. Uh, this, uh, this note showing where they should be placed in the cap. I think, I think Russell did a, a very good little silhouette of a worker. Okay, so Lehman placed six buttons in the mural. Um, I've indicated them with these white arrows. Now, here's uh, the color study. There's a patch of color in the color study that seems to suggest Lehman was planning to include these union buttons all along. But again, uh, this little fleck of color went unnoticed by the section officials when they were reviewing the color study. Um, this was kind of a popular uh, game that artists would play with the section administrators. They would try to slip in 
some details, get, th get things by the uh, administrators. And I'll, I'll show just a couple examples. This is a mural. Um, this is actually in the, the Pittsburgh uh, Federal Courthouse building, um, which uh, I mentioned be in addition to post offices, the other courthouses and custom houses were other federal buildings that often received these artworks. This is called Pittsburgh Panorama by an artist named Stuyvesant Van Veen. And Van Veen was a, a committed leftist. I think he may have described himself as a communist, uh, which I find incredible that somebody who would call himself a communist was still able to get a commission for a uh, federal courthouse, but it was a, uh, a different time back then. And his initial design was meant to be sort of a, a uh, depiction of a class, class struggle, but that's not something the section approved of. Um, so Van Veen relented and he, he painted this sort of industrial landscape of Pittsburgh. But he, he did plan on uh, kind of getting his revenge. Um, he distorted the river, that's the Monongahela River kind of wrapping around Pittsburgh. Um, and if you look at the light colored river, um, it becomes more obvious. He, he um, distorted it, he added a kink in the river so that if you were to look at the mural upside down, the river starts to look like a sickle. And uh, Van Veen claimed he inserted the sickle, sickle and hammer um, as a way to get back at the section. I can't really make out where the hammer is supposed to be, but I think the sickle um, is more obvious, obvious. Although I don't know if uh, people, you know, could perceive this uh, upside down sickle or not. Now, not all of the the details that artists would kind of sneak by the administrators were political. Uh, this is a, a a mural in Plymouth, Pennsylvania, which is in northeastern Pennsylvania. This is called Meal Time with the Early Coal Miners by an artist named Jared French. Jared French liked to paint male nudes. And as you can see, this is already a very kind of homoerotic painting, um, supposedly of, of uh, 18th century coal miners in Pennsylvania. At the time he was working on this mural, he was also doing a mural for the Richmond, Virginia post office. And he found this, read about a scene during the Civil War where Confederate soldiers were crossing a stream and had to strip down. So he, he did the, he proposed a mural of, of naked Confederate soldiers, which of course the section and uh, administrators rejected right away. So he had to paint clothes on the Confederate soldiers. But while he was working on this mural for Pennsylvania, he, he slipped in a male nude in the background. This is the uh, a figure uh, on the right of the mural in the background in a coal, a flat boat, uh, completely naked for no, no particular reason. And again, because the section administrators only saw a very small eight by 10 photograph of the finished mural, they never noticed this detail. Now, um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about the influence of the Mexican muralists on uh, the artists. Uh, of course, Lehman and Jackson Pollock worked with Siqueiros and were influenced by him. And the Mexican muralists seemed to exert an influence on um, many of the artists who worked uh, in the East and many of the artists who worked in Pennsylvania. As I mentioned, the section administrators really liked uh, the Midwestern regionalist and kind of held them up as an example of the style that uh, the artists should be working in. But none of the artists who worked in Pennsylvania in, in all the correspondence that I've read, and nobody ever has anything nice to say about the Midwestern regionalist. One really explicitly says he doesn't like Grant Wood, who was a favorite of Edward Rowan. Um, but they did really like the Mexican muralists. Here is a painting called Zapatistas by Jose Clemente Orozco. It's an oil on canvas from 1931 and it's owned by the uh, Museum of Modern Art. In 19, uh, I mean, in, in uh, 2020, the Whitney had an exhibit called Vida Americana about the Mexican muralists and their influence in the US. It, has, it had one of Lehman's paintings, the, uh, the driller that was in the Rikers Island uh, uh, prison mural. This, 
this painting shows followers, followers of Zapata marching towards their deaths. Um, this, and this painting was shown um, in the weekend section of the New York Times um, while this exhibit was going on. I was really excited because I, I was all set to go to the Whitney exhibit, but um, that's when COVID really uh, broke out and I had to cancel the trip. But when I saw this, this photograph in the New York Times, it reminded me of something, but it took me a while to figure out where I had seen it. Then I remembered uh, that it reminded me of a, of a post office mural. Here's the mural it reminded me of. It, uh, this is called Slate Belt People by an artist named Barbara Crawford, uh, about a quarter of the artists who painted artworks, painted murals in, in Pennsylvania were women. Um, and uh, this is meant to depict uh, Banger's uh, main, indus main uh, industry, which was um, slate quarrying. Banger is in Eastern Pennsylvania and is known as the slate belt capital of the world. And Banger produced almost all of the blackboards for schools in the US. The unusual thing about this, this is a, a painted in oil, but it's not on canvas. It is painted on four panels of slate. That was something the postmaster wanted um, to, to sort of uh, commemorate the, the, the town's main industry. And this is meant to show uh, three waves of, of immigrants who settled in Bangor who, and who worked, who quarried the slate. Um, the figures in the foreground are holding these, these dark rectangles and those are used in what's called um, slate dressing. So here's the mural with Orozco's painting above it and you can see the similarities. The central grouping in, in the Bangor mural is looks very much like Orozco's painting. Um, the, the figures of the people marching, their, their legs are trailing in the same way. There's a horse in profile with people um, on horseback. Uh, Orozco was a very influential artist at the time. He painted a mural called Prometheus, which Jackson Pollock called the greatest painting in North America. And many of the artists who painted post office murals in Pennsylvania mentioned their admiration for the Mexican muralists. And of course, um, Earl Lehman worked with Siqueiros. Last year, I was watching a film noir called Johnny O'Clock. In the background over the fireplace is Orozco's Zapatistas. The painting can be seen in several scenes and in one, the main characters even discuss it. So what, what interested me was um, Orozco's painting seemed to seep into even popular culture. So it must've been very popular. So let's go back to Renova. Um, often, uh, as I, I mentioned, the um, Harold uh, Lehman's mural found favor eventually with the section administrators and people in Renova also really liked it. Um, here's, a, here's a letter that postmaster Luke Binder wrote to Edward Rowan in August of 42. As far as I'm concerned, the mural is a fine piece of work and is a wonderful addition to this office. Many townspeople have viewed the mural today and without exception, the comments have been most favorable, which makes the unanimity surprising and which I would say speaks highly of Mr. Lehman's faithful portrayal of an operation in locomotive repair. Uh, and then two months later, he wrote to Luke, the postmaster wrote to Harold Lehman, You'd be surprised at the number of people who come in and remark about the mural. The most surprising thing to me is that no one has yet found any flaws. That is a favorite sport in a small town. If you're thinking of hunting this year, you should come up here. Lots of birds, turkeys, deer, and bear this year, which um, really indicates that, uh, that uh, Harold Lehman ingratiated himself to the people in Renova and they, they really liked him. Um, now, often when an artist created a successful post office mural, um, he or she was given other, other uh, post offices to de decorate, even either in Pennsylvania or in a uh, surrounding state. But by the time uh, Harold Lehman's mural was installed, the programs had been uh, closed down. They really kind of shut down after the US entered World War II. Um, so there were no more post office commissions. However, 
the Treasury Department did commission artists to design war bond posters. Here are three that um, Lehman painted. I, I got these from Lisa's uh, beautiful website. Now, something else uh, Lisa mentioned last week in her Zoom pre presentation was a quote of her father's. And he wrote, let the artist bring to his wall the knowledge, the technical resources, the imaginative, intuitive, and emotional faculties which he as an artist is aware of within himself. But he must never forget that a mural is a social experience whereby he communicates with other men. Um, Harold Lehman depicted a specific aspect of Renova at a specific time, and it still resonates with people today. Uh, I think uh, Lisa and I visited Renova, I think it was around 2008, 2007, 2008, and uh, we were in the lobby, and it was remarkable because people came up to us and started talking about the people in the mural. Um, people knew the foreman, R.C. Russell, and told stories about him, and uh, they, they said they knew people, some of the workers depicted in the mural. Um, he, it, it seems that Harold Lehman actually did use workers as models. I, I think the faces maybe kind of generalized that they don't look uh, specifically like the worker, workers the, to the degree that R.C. Russell was portrayed. But it, it was clear to us that um, the, the mural still had tremendous resonance with the town. Um, there was, there was uh, one of the things I wish when Michael McManski, the photographer and I would go around to these post offices to photograph them because we, we would be there for hours at a time. People would come up and start telling us stories. I wish I had tape recorded these stories because they're really wonderful. Um, but there was a story that someone told us. I, I want to, I hope it, it will make sense, but um, Lisa asked somebody if there were many injuries uh, on the job in Renova. And the person said uh, something like, um, injuries? No, there weren't many injuries. There were a lot of fatalities because when something fell on you, you were, you were squashed, you were dead, but not many injuries which I thought was really funny. Uh, well, I mean, you know, grim funny, but um, these, uh, these murals really uh, uh, convey a lot of information about what life was like back during the depression. And uh, in a lot of these towns, you know, um, work was really hard and sometimes fatal. Um, and I, I, I think it's great that we have this visual legacy of that era. Um, now, to bring the mural up to uh, more to the present, um, the mural was uh, cleaned, I think, sometime in the 1990s. It's in really good shape. Some of the murals are not, but this is in, still in good shape. And also, uh, it seems that Harold Lehman was pleased with this mural. Lisa told me that he visited it in the 1978, I believe, right? So um, I'm really glad that uh, the mural is still there and he got to see it. Because something else that's, that you know, I've learned from um, Lisa's presentation and the exhibit at the Pollock Krasner House was that uh, Lehman's, the art he created for an, an exhibit with Sequeiros in Los Angeles was destroyed by the police. So that was destroyed. And then unfortunately, I think in the 1960s, his magnificent mural, um, for the Riker, Rikers Island prison was just torn down by uh, on the orders of the warden. So that was destroyed. So I think it's really incredible that this post office in remote Pennsylvania houses, I, I think it's the last uh, large format example of public art that Harold Lehman produced. Um, so if you find yourself uh, in North Central Pennsylvania, uh, sometime. I hope you'll find your way to the Renova post office and uh, check out uh, Harold Lehman's mural. And uh, that's the end of my presentation, and I will be very happy to take any questions.
thank you, David. That is really amazing. Uh, it's wonderful that there is reverence for the mural even today in uh, the town, because so often these post offices are, I don't know, people just ignore them. Uh, they just don't, they don't even see them as art. They just see them as um, decoration or if they see them at all. But uh, one thing that I, I would be curious about, is the town still a center of, of railroad repair and construction? Or what, what, is, what is the industry there today, if there is one? No, it's, I think Renova is a, is a pretty depressed town. Um, the uh, rail operation, I think, I think they really sh closed down in the 1960s. When Lisa and I were there, there was some talk about private investors purchasing the operation and maybe doing some kind of, of uh, repair, you know, continuing to do repair work. But that, that's a real problem with a lot of these small towns. Um, they were really built on one specific industry, whether it be a slate quarrying or in Pennsylvania, of course, the big industry was steel and coal. The steel industry um, really isn't what it was back then. Um, so Renova's a, kind of a depressed town. The, I remember talking to somebody at, his, at a historical society about this, and they said, you know, it's terrible for the town, but it's but but sometimes um, a, a depressed town is the uh, what did that person say? Something like it. Uh, it can be a things like like post office art are often preserved by the fact that the town is kind of has kind of uh, lost its economic uh, activity. Or it gets stuck in time and it becomes a, a question of inertia that they don't do anything to it because there's nothing being done anywhere. It's not being fixed up or renovated or rehabilitated and for some other use. I think that's what happened to some of the post office murals is post office gets rid of the building and they either build a new one, a bigger one, a, a quote unquote better one, uh, and they sell the building and then the art goes with it. And the next law office that wants to open in that building doesn't want a bunch of steel workers in there. <laughs> but right. I think Lisa has her hand up. So oh. I, I definitely want to defer yeah. to her. Hi, Lisa. You're, you're muted, Lisa. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, David. That was wonderful. And um, it did remind me of the time we saw the mural. And I think that there was, well, I know when my father went, it was something like, what would it have been? The, like the 75th, no, not 75th, maybe 50th. It was some anniversary. Yeah. Um, and when I went, there was also remarkably, as you said, so many people just express their appreciation and love of the mural. And the fact is they've kept the post office in relatively yeah. good shape. Now, a lot of these, a lot of these post offices were left to, um, you know, fall apart. But I, the town really does have an appreciation, wouldn't you say? You oh, know? absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's clear that it means a lot to the people. And um, that's why my favorite post office murals are the ones that depict the town at the time it was created. Because I think that's much more exciting than um, sometimes they would do a historical mural. It, it's really interesting because a lot of times towns did not value, didn't see the value in the industry that it was known for and would often ask the artist to create a historical mural. But I think it's these ones that show the towns in the 1930s and 40s that are so wonderful because they often capture details, small details um, that are lost over time, such as the fact that um, the mountain in Renovo was clear cut. Mm -hmm. So I think they're, these are, they're wonderful art, artworks and they're also wonderful um, uh, time capsules of, of the town. I should mention, since you mentioned yeah. the, um, uh, the, uh, the condition, um, we have lost, uh, I mean, I, it, it's really lucky that, that uh, you know, we, Pennsylvania has the, the Harold Lehman mural, um, because we have lost about 10% of the artworks. Um, these often fell out of favor in the 1960s, and they were painted over or, or torn down. There was an amazing 
beautiful mural in Western Pennsylvania by the precisionist Niall Spencer that was, that was ripped down in 1966. Um, so we, we have lost some artwork, but um, other artwork is preserved. Also, as you can imagine, a, a post office lobby is not really, is not an art gallery. And so it doesn't have climate control. Uh, there's, there are fluctuations in temperature and humidity. Often these post offices were heated with coal. So the murals would be covered with uh, the soot and grime um, and had to be cleaned. Fortunately, there was a, a postal worker in the 1990s who wrote his master's thesis on uh, some of the murals in Eastern Pennsylvania. And that this one was one of them. And he also got uh, funding for, for, bench, uh, for uh, professional cleaning conservation. And uh, I think that's why the Renova mural looks so good. It, it, it was cleaned up and uh, it really looks great today. Well, you know, the Niall Spencer mural actually was removed and sent to the Smithsonian. You're right. Yeah, You're right. it was the American Art Museum. I don't know if they uh, wound up restoring it or if they are just they just keeping it, but it, it was badly damaged in the removal, but it, it does survive uh, at least, it, it's probably on life support, but it yeah. is there at the Smithsonian. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, it, 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 wasn't, uh, it wasn't destroyed. It was just severely- Vandalized. Um, <laughs> it was, the mural, the, uh, the post office lobby was enlarged in 1966 and the the, the uh, construction workers just ripped it off the wall rolled it up and threw it in the basement where it suffered water damage and a lot of the paint flaked off mm. and uh you can go to the smithsonian american art uh website and you can see what it looks like now and it's just i, I don't think it could be restored i think it would be essentially uh would have, have to be repainted yeah um now the the interesting thing is now Spencer, uh, in addition to the mural, also did a number of uh, easel paintings based on his composition that are housed at the um, uh, Rhode Island School of Design Museum. Yeah. And, excuse me, so you can see what he intended. Um, there's a good black and white archival photograph of the mural, and then these easel paintings show the colors. He used a lot of um, kind of like deep reds and ochre and browns and gray. We actually had one of these um, canvases at the Harrisburg, at the State Museum in Harrisburg for our exhibit of post office art. So it was, it was fun to see that, but it, it's heartbreaking that, you know, a, a mural, that the mural was damaged so badly. Was there a, a catalog for that exhibition, do you? They didn't, no, they didn't do a catalog. Um, they did a, they did a brochure, mm -hmm. but, um, uh, they did a catalog. Oh, and, and by the way, if uh, if anybody would like um, to see that or or some collateral materials, um, you're welcome to email me, and I'll be happy to send them. And um, one of the things, um, since we've got a little time, I I uh, I wanted to mention this because another thing I remember from Lisa's presentation was um, how much Harold Lehman was influenced by Renaissance painters and including Piero della Francesca. Um, and this is, this, is, uh, uh, this is kind of a, uh, a strange connection, but there's a, uh, a book I really like called Summer's Lease by John Mortimer. And in it, the protagonist um, spends a summer in Tuscany and she, she goes on, I think it's called The Trail of uh, Piero della Francesca. I think maybe it's like six murals and paintings in small chapels uh, around Tuscany. And uh, I was sort of intrigued by that idea. And that gave me the idea to design driving tours of some of these murals. Um, and that became a way Michael McManski and I could afford to do the photography because we, we started doing this photography so long ago, we were still shooting on film, on four by five large format film with a view camera. And it was enormously expensive because Michael is an architectural photographer and shot on different film stocks and bracketed the exposures and all this stuff. So we were spending quite a bit of money per site. And uh, one of the ways we could afford it was I would propose doing these driving tours to visitor, visitors bureaus. They, they call it like heritage tourism in Pennsylvania. 
And I did one driving tour um, in central Pennsylvania and it included the Renova mural um, because I thought it was kind of fun. Um, the, the combination of traveling to a small town, seeing what the small town is like, and then viewing the art just as the uh, protagonist in this book was viewing the Piera della Francesca murals. And just as worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Now Lisa say, has another comment. Wow, that was a big connection, but you got there, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my hand was up because I want people to know about this fantastic exhibit that you helped to curate for, uh, it called a common ca canvas at state, what was it called? Um, the State Museum, the Pennsylvania State Museum. Right, and, and there is a website, if you post it, where people can at least see, you know, like bits of it. But um, at that exhibit, David gave me a, a really wonderful opportunity to share the archival material behind this, this mural, including the buttons, mm -hmm. including the blueprint mm -hmm. um, that my father had to adhere to from a section of fine arts. Um, we had a lot of really fun archival things in that show. And the, well, hat, the cap. And, and the caps. Oh, yeah, all the stuff that uh, obviously is, is, would have been uh, criticized by the locals if he hadn't gotten it right. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but it, is, it is interesting that, the, that an outsider coming into the community was accepted and more than accepted, really embraced, uh, yeah. I think, because he felt such a kinship with the people he was depicting, even if they're not, you know, specifically Uncle Joe that, that you would recognize, but the kind of generic worker, but, but yet with personality, not just yeah. a cipher. So and, and real personality there. Thank you. And may I also add the research he did, I, what is, I, I don't know exactly what that instrument is that the fellow on the right is holding. Oh, it's a compressor of some okay. kind. Yeah, but he had like books of, of you know, models of, you know, a hundred different compressors. <laughs> so, and make sure he had all the details right to your point, Helen. You know, yeah. um, these are things that the locals would have called him out on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it was a tremendously successful uh, mural from, from everybody's standpoint. Um, and Lisa, since you, one of the things I'll mention about the exhibit uh, was, and it was possible thanks to all of your archival material, it's great that so many artists saved all of this stuff and then, you know, artist families save it because it, it is wonderful material. At the exhibit in Harrisburg, we, we showed a lot of reproductions of the murals, but we also built two lobby end walls. Right. And mm, we, the, yeah, and the Renova uh, mural was, was one of them because this really was the last mural created for Pennsylvania. Mm. And it looked, it looked amazing, uh, life-size. So it was, it was quite mm. striking, you know, because we wanted to give people a sense of the scale Right. of the artwork. So we actually, and we built the, the door and we had the, the bulletin boards and we put up World, World, World War II era uh, posters in those bulletin boards. Yeah. And it's it was, a, yeah, it's a big hit. There's a theme here now between your show and, and Helen's with the reproducing mm -hmm. the art in, you know, a photographic life-size image. Although of course at Pollock Krasner House, we couldn't do it life-size. Well, we would have need three Paula Krasner houses <laughs> to it to because it was seven. The, the Rikers uh, mural was seventy feet wide. Exactly. Also, I and I think it's important the the distinction that these murals for the post offices and courthouses were not done by the WPA. This was right. a commission. So right. There was a competition. And the artist had to put up a performance bond, had to pay for the materials and pay for the installation. So it wasn't something that like a make work program where they were just getting a paycheck to do it. It was a completely different program. So it has a, a, another type of distinction, which of course the federal government is still commissioning art today through the General Services Administration. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of continuation of that sort of government patronage. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and artists in interviews uh, decades later would, would uh, always point out that they worked for the Treasury Department and it was a commission. It was not a relief project. Mm -hmm. um, 
Although a number of artists worked on on both WPA art projects and um, as, as Harold projects. Did, yeah. yeah. Well, many of the people on the easel projects who wanted to do murals but didn't have the opportunity on the WPA would apply like mm -hmm. Doris Lee was one of them. She would have uh, applied and, and got a commission for a post office mural. That's right. Yeah. Well, are there any other questions or comments? I see the uh, Saint State Museum of Pennsylvania uh, link is in the, the chat if anyone wants to follow that. And I will say thank you so much to David for a really fascinating talk and how many of us will ever get into <laughs> central western Pennsylvania I don't know but if we do we will definitely know to stop at the Renova post office and I'd like to mention that on November 1st Gail Levin will be our speaker in the next of the Art in Focus series uh, speaking about Lynn Drexler's work which is on this exhibit in New York right now so I hope you'll join us for that I want to thank Victoria for hosting and thank you all for joining us and wish you all a lovely evening. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.